Very good morning to you. Welcome back to the show. Rather, if you're just joining us, so Karibu Sana, this is a Y in the morning. You can reach us at Y5 on Facebook, Y254 underscore channel on X, not Twitter anymore, and all those other lovely social media platforms still at Y254 channel. My name is Valentine or at Kalami Val. And now we are at that place. We're going to talk about the state of the nation. But I told you, I think I'm going to change the name. Now just going to be Voices of the Youth. I'd like to believe we're all youthful in this particular set right here right now and we do want our voices to be heard a lot has been going on this week the past other week finance act here finance act there house levy like this definitely definitely something to talk about and of course i always like to squeeze in at least one international story now before we go any further allow me to allow my panelists to introduce themselves. Hi, good morning. Good morning too. How are you? Um, we are very fine. Looking very sharp, I see, this Monday morning. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe I'll start with you, sir. What is your good name? Yes, my name is Stephen Mwangi Kimani. Mm -hmm. uh, Liars on my connection. Mm -hmm. I come from Rumuru. Mm -hmm. And now I'm very grateful to be here with you mm -hmm. to share about what's going on in this country. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have any other country. It's true. Apart from this one. Mm -hmm. I'm very grateful to, because it's my first time mm -hmm. to have a conversation with you mm -hmm. in the studio Y254. Good to have you. What did you tell me your alias is again? My name? Well, your alias. My alias? Yes. I'm a businessman. Uh -huh. At the same time, I'm, I'm a politician. Uh -huh. The last elections are fired as an MCA for a Muru Central Ward. Uh -huh. But the next time I'm planning to the people of Remuru, uh -huh. they are coming to tell me I'm, I'm the best to fight for member of parliament uh -huh. in Muru's constituency. Uh -huh. Because for the last 20 years they've been recycling mm -hmm. two of the, um, between two members of parliament. Mm -hmm. But this time they have made a, choice, uh, a change. They mm -hmm. want to a change. Mm -hmm. And mm. you are that change? Yeah. Who can you pass that day? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, all yeah. right. All right. Okay. And you, sir? Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Caleb mm -hmm. Ikenye. I'm a law student here at the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And I'm also the president of uh, the Nakuru County Students Caucus. Mm -hmm. I've been here before. And I'm so very much humbled to have uh, gotten this opportunity to grace your shows mm -hmm. once more. Mm -hmm. Yes. Much welcome. Very, very Thank welcome, you. guys. So I don't. I, I, I was planning to start international and then come back home, but I think home is best. Eh? Mm -hmm. East West home is best. So let's start with what's been happening. So yesterday, His Excellency the President uh, had a conversation with two particular reporters, and he was just basically giving or taking stock for what he's been doing the past year. And funny, during our introduction, we were talking about. CBC and the universities and the TVETs and that's actually our question by the way of the day go to our socials and we're trying to figure out how how some people most people now have, have either opted or are being sent to these particular polytechnics versus you know actual universities do you think it's unfair in any way or manner before we go on and okay, let me give you a story. So yes. the story was, or, or rather the, the background is, there's this young lady who had a feature done on her. So she went to school, studied, got her A minus smart. And if you know anything about 844, A minus is not something easy to get. So she got it, but, and she had applied for dentistry at the university a degree. But what she got instead was a diploma in nutrition. And so she's now trying to contest it. And yes, there are leeways for her to, find another course, I guess, because this is a window that, that allows you to appeal that particular decision by the bodies involved. But generally, as a country, do you feel like we're being pushed somewhere we don't want to go in terms of education? Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, basing on that particular story that you've just told us, mm -hmm. Uh, it clearly depicts a picture of uh, incompetence on the side of uh, those bodies that uh, are mandated to allocate students to different uh, courses or different, mm -hmm. uh, you know, career paths that mm -hmm. they have selected. And having a lady score an A minus and later on uh, missing out on what she had desired to, you know, she has fought her way up mm. and uh, later on missing 
on what he desired, mm -hmm. then that one should raise some alarm about, uh, or rather on our systems of uh, you know, education. But uh, one very funny thing or one very interesting thing that I'm uh, happy about is that uh, we are on our path to, you know, getting off from uh, this 844 system. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, the lady might uh, seek redress from uh, that particular body, mm -hmm. but at least this one should raise an alarm about uh, some of the technicalities that uh, we have in our educational uh, institutions and uh, structures that, mm -hmm. of course, we need to look into. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, I brought it up, Mahimshima, because that's something His Excellency addressed yesterday. And he talked about how one of the things he's proud of is having first stabilized CBC and now with the TVETs that, you know, are able to give scholarships now and, and other bursaries and all these things. But Qua Ground, does it sound like people are okay? Okay, let me say that on the ground, people are not okay mm -hmm. with the Kenya Kwanzaa government. One, during the last election uh, campaign, mm -hmm. they made a lot of promises. Mm -hmm which have become a broken promises. Uh -huh. And the Kenyans are losing their faith each and every day. Uh -huh. For instance, like the uh, education uh, sector is a very sensitive area uh -huh. where we mood our people, where we make our, our future generation and our future leadership. Okay, if uh, the Kenya, uh, Kenya Kwanza government, uh -huh. <coughs> since it's not um, serious to honor their, pro uh, their promises, mm -hmm. they are making the nation to head into the long direction. Mm -hmm. For instance, the minister, cabinet secretary in charge of education, mm -hmm. uh, is not uh, the best person to head the education sector. Why do you feel so? Because in the previous we, uh, we have an uh, experience, mm -hmm. like um, Matian and Kaimeng, mm -hmm. how they used to come out to fight for education, mm -hmm. to encourage uh, the young people to learn, to support the education sector, mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. But in the Kenya Kwanzaa mm -hmm. government, uh, they are not doing any effort to see that they are empowering our people. Mm -hmm to how to support the education. Uh -huh. And that's why we see there's, there's that uh, f uh, disappointment, frustration f uh, for our young people who want to do the education. Uh -huh. Yes. Do like supplementing on uh, what okay. he's saying, okay. uh, one thing that uh, every Kenyan should realize, of course the president echoed what uh, Mandela said that education is a, is a only tool that you know equalizes members uh -huh. of a certain society uh -huh. uh, but education each and every day is becoming more expensive uh -huh. and it's because uh, those ones who are the receiving end the students the parents they uh -huh. are not involved in these important decision making processes uh -huh. like when we had the presidential working party on uh, the, C the cbc implementation uh -huh. it, it was not conclusive it was not exclusive Students from different parts of the country uh -huh. were not like uh, reached out to to give their views. Uh -huh. I never saw these people in uh, in my home constituency in Molo. Uh -huh. So I feel like uh, in what he's saying, uh, the government uh, is not being more exclusive uh -huh. on issues that uh, affect us as uh, at, the, at the receiving end. We are students, uh -huh. as parents, uh -huh. and. Uh, that's where the technicalities arise from. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, but also on the flip side, again, His Excellency also went ahead to say that he is, I, he has been able to make a move which is high around 50, 56,000 teachers in one particular year, and that has never been seen before. And a funding that was approximately 5.2 billion has been moved up to 10 billion. So are you sure that we are saying the correct thing that education, that particular docket is being neglected. Is he not trying? Are we being impatient? Okay, like you said, the Kenya Kwanza <laughs> government uh, is over-promising, so we, uh -huh. we, 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 until we see mm -hmm. it being implemented, then uh -huh. we cannot believe. So, uh, personally, um, I will still insist that as we move on day by day, education is becoming more expensive, uh -huh. and we need to rethink about it. Uh -huh. Of course, yesterday the president said that uh, there is no government that has ever allocated a higher budget to 
ed the education sector Except than this his one. government. Yes, mm -hmm. true. We want to see that budget mm -hmm. being put into work, being mm -hmm. implemented. Students are lacking, uh, you know, uh, lockers in schools. Mm -hmm. Students are lacking books. Our laptops you find went uh, just like ten that. students mm -hmm. sharing one textbook mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, Mashinani. Mm -hmm. So we want to see this budget being implemented to the latter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And speaking of Mashinani, maybe as we come to you, we've actually had, we still continue to see cases of people who study under trees, mm -hmm. and you're yes. trying to figure out why this budget is so big yet there are no classrooms. If it just happens to rain there will be no school for some time until yeah. conditions are favorable, which is mm -hmm. a bit wanting, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why I'm saying we want to see the action. You know, even the Bible says the action speak louder than once. You're a bit like His Excellency. He also likes to quote the Bible. <laughs> he even sang for us a little bit. I don't know if you heard that. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to uh, emphasize that it's good the Kenya Kwanza government mm -hmm to be serious with uh, Kenyans, especially the education and the new CBC mm -hmm. uh, system. Mm -hmm. They have to, you know, you know the, uh, we are there on, during the campaign mm -hmm. because I was also an aspirant mm -hmm. and we had them of what they wanted to change this country mm -hmm. and Kenyans had a hope with the regime that everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. But it's very unfortunate that Everywhere, every sector every, in the education, still there is some um, challenges which the present government has been unable to to settle mm -hmm. or to solve and to make a difference. Mm -hmm. But now they have been taken to a politics, mm -hmm. uh, blaming the opposition mm -hmm. uh, and blaming the previous government. Mm -hmm. But they have done nothing for the last uh one year now we are to one year mm -hmm. so i want to advise them they should work for the people mm -hmm. because they are given the chance by the people mm -hmm. the people voted for them it's up to them mm -hmm. to demonstrate mm -hmm. the leadership that the kenyans want mm -hmm. and also to face their challenge, the challenges that we have mm -hmm. head on mm -hmm. without blame game mm -hmm. to other uh, prayers mm -hmm. Because when you are given the uh, instrument of power mm -hmm. as a president uh, uh, and you have swear with the constitution of Kenya mm -hmm. that you will protect and defend the interests of the Kenyans, you will protect the nation. So you have to deliver what you said mm -hmm. you want. Mm -hmm. So, but for now, we are still experiencing the of our promises. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why we are still in that mood of promise and that's why most of the Kenyans mm -hmm. are losing hope each and every day mm -hmm. because they want to see the action, the actual uh, deeds. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Now, I'm glad you said that because this is going to be my next point. So, as you know, we have had the idea, I would like to believe the idea was to demonstrate peacefully yes. or what is called picketing, which is in the constitution less two things are done simultaneously. It has to be a peaceful demonstration and it must be done without weapons. You must be unarmed. But of course, His Excellency, we've had a tug of war if you've been keeping up with um, the going on on the street. So we have a certain school of thought that goes and says, this is no longer picketing. This is no longer peaceful demonstration. Now people are just being violent. They're going to knock to Maui. They're going to burn things. They're going to loot in people's businesses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Incitement. The youth are being misused. This is actually what he said yesterday versus now the idea of peaceful demonstrations, which he says he is okay with. Do you feel like <clears throat> something is, is, is amiss? Do you believe that we protested because he then came and said that he supports the police, the police enforcing, you know, their particular rights. But okay, we've also been going with the back and forth of police brutality. So what really is going on here? Okay, uh, well, let me start then. Uh, you can, uh, <laughs> You've been waiting. Yeah. Uh, under the hierarchy of laws in Kenya, mm -hmm. the constitution is a supreme law mm -hmm. of the land. Yes. In that constitution, we have heard about this provision, Article 37, mm -hmm. that every Kenyan has a right to protest mm -hmm. and every Kenyan has a right to, 
to you know to take part in strikes mm -hmm. uh, it is not a conditional right the only aspect of it having a condition is that people should not be armed mm, and must be peaceful that particular provision of the constitution cannot be suspended by anyone mm -hmm. that particular provision of the constitution cannot be limited even by the parliament because it is a provision under the supreme law of the land. Mm -hmm. So uh, personally, I think uh, maybe the president did not get it right. Uh, practically, he may want to be on the right side, but theoretically, mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. not right. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw people protesting, and uh, in their exercise of their right to protest, police, the police, mm -hmm. under the, you know, I think they, are, they were instructed or directed. Mm -hmm. The police um, ended up uh, executing so many people. Mm -hmm. We lost so many lives uh, on grounds that, you know, they were saying that uh, this, this is no longer a peaceful protest. Mm -hmm. But, you know, looking, it, looking at it at uh, the, the, the kind of force that was being used by the police, mm -hmm. it was not proportional to how the Kenyans who were protesting were reacting. So mm -hmm. I think this is something that uh, we should revisit. Mm -hmm. The IPOA uh, has been so quiet on this. Mm -hmm. It has been so silent. We need to, to hear people, you know, you know, we need to hear these institutions come actually, and speak out sorry about this. Sorry for interrupting, but a few days ago, actually, IPOA did come out and, and call out the, the police brutality or the cases of police brutality because there are certain regions where we have seen our thing is with the digital age, everyone can be a journalist. Just take out your phone, record, post, have a sensational caption, boom, you've, you've spread some type of information. So there were very disturbing videos of um, police, again, it could be edited, I don't know, but I, I'll call them allegations. So allegations of police going into actual homes or people who are not even outside protesting, you know, and then flogging them, literally, that's not beating anymore, that's flogging. Yeah, so. And it's so ironical because the police are supposed to protect properties and lives. Mm -hmm. But how do you end up getting into someone's house, mm -hmm. picking that person? You beat that person up. I think there is even someone who, he has a lot of fractures. Mm. I think, <laughs> anyway, Mbele Kosao. Mbele Kosao. <laughs> All right, because the, again, the, the, the government did come and say that you, it's not just the civilians who are being injured, mm -hmm. that they're also members of the police force mm -hmm. that are in you know quite a dilapidated let me use that word state mm -hmm. so it's clearly a back and forth so what do you think <coughs> okay let me say this a protest mm -hmm. or demonstration mm -hmm. is uh constitutional things and uh, and the constitution of kenya mm -hmm. is the supreme document that we ought respect mm -hmm. And that's why we see even the president, the cabinet secretaries, and the government of uh, state officers, they have to swear with the constitution mm -hmm. that we defend and protect it and to uphold. Okay, the article that seven on the constitution 2010 is very clear mm -hmm. regarding the demonstra demonstrators, mm -hmm. the people who want to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. And the reason why the, those people that made the constitution, they wanted to put that article you know the Kenya have we have come from a wrong way uh -huh. in those dark days uh -huh. where the freedom of ex uh, expression uh -huh. was under threat uh -huh. and nobody was allowed to speak your mind uh -huh. to the uh, to speak what you, you are dissatisfaction uh -huh. um, and that's why the new constitution came to be in order to give that platform uh -huh. so that everybody can be had uh -huh. and, uh, and, and every solution can be sold. Uh -huh. So uh, in terms of uh, protesters, you can't uh, victimize a demonstrator uh -huh. using the police force or brutality uh -huh. because that protester or demonstrator, uh, they have something which they are not content with, uh -huh. especially the high cost of living. Uh -huh. The life has become hunter, uh -huh. and the government of the day is failing to address the situation uh -huh. that the citizens are suffering, uh -huh. they are going through, because since this government came to power, uh -huh. although the life there before 
we had a, a COVID-19 mm -hmm. pandemic. We have that experience that most of the people lose their job. Mm -hmm. Economically, was, uh, this nation was affected because it was a, an international uh, uh, crisis, yeah, mm -hmm. pandemic. Now, after pandemic, mm -hmm. we came to an election. Mm -hmm. And we see when we, we have an election, uh, no, nothing's happened mm -hmm. until the election is, is over. Mm -hmm. uh, after election, then the nation started to experience some droughts and starvation where uh -huh. most of the people died, uh -huh. animals. Uh -huh. And so this, this nation was very much affected. Uh -huh. So since then, we have not yet recovered. Uh -huh. We are still under the challenges we as a nation. Uh -huh. And when this uh, Kenya power of the regime uh -huh. came to power, uh -huh came with the promises mm -hmm. that they are going to address those issues, mm -hmm. especially the high cost of living, that we're going to lower the, the, fro, uh, the food, right, uh, the price the of food, mm. and so many things mm -hmm. that they promised the Kenyans. Mm -hmm. So when they fail to do so, the Kenyans, they have the right to question the government of the day, why? Mm -hmm. are, uh, the hunger, the uh, we, we, we are buying at the last Time uh -huh. 150 cents uh -huh. now, it's about 200 cents. Uh -huh. The life is becoming harder. Uh -huh. How can we do so? They have to, rem to demonstrate. Uh -huh. But the government of the day is not talking about the issue uh -huh. at hand, how we are going to solve this problem that we are having uh -huh. at the moment. Uh -huh. And yet, people are suffering. The people who don't have a job, the people who, who, who don't have the f uh, food, the, the people who are I have a lot of challenges, uh -huh. but the reason why the, peop the, uh, the Kenyans are demonstrating uh -huh. because the government is not providing any solution uh -huh. regarding the situation that we have uh -huh. in the country. Uh -huh. At the same time, uh, those demonstrators, they have the right to demonstrate uh -huh. because they are given those rights in the constitution of Kenya. Uh -huh. And that's why you see a police officer cannot arrest a demonstrator and arraign her or him before the court of law uh -huh. on account of demonstration uh -huh. because it's a constitutional uh, provision uh -huh. to demonstrate. Uh -huh. So uh, the problem with the regime, and that's why if they use that route, uh -huh. they are going to make the Kenyan citizen to hate the regime uh -huh. because they have to listen to the people uh -huh. and to address the issues. Uh -huh that they are affecting the Kenyans. Those who are in government uh -huh. may not feel the impact because the, the, we are paying the tax. They are the beneficiary of the tax that we pay. Uh -huh. But there's people who, who are suffering the outside. Uh -huh. I come from the ground uh -huh. where um, I reside. Most of the people, we meet each other every people because some of the elected leaders, when we are elected, uh -huh. they, they dishonored themselves from the people. Uh -huh. So they are not having that touch with the people. So we, that we are not like to be elected, uh -huh. they are coming to us. So we have the information on the ground that people are suffering uh -huh. and the life is very hard. So um, on the other side, the regime, when we release that, uh, when they feel to address the high cost of living, uh -huh. uh, now the opposition, uh -huh. Uh, they're taking that advantage uh -huh. to challenge the government uh -huh. to address. But they are not what they are doing. They are talking about politics. Uh -huh. Promising, 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 promising. Uh -huh. And the, the opposition, they want them to deliver. Mm -hmm. In terms of to deliver because you have the power, you have everything. Mm. What you have to do, just deliver what you told the people. Mm -hmm do for them. If I just may interrupt you, I, I, I think you may have asked and answered a question at yes. the same time mm. because you have rightly mentioned COVID-19. COVID-19 again was a global pam pandemic. Yes. Yes. It affected the economy of the entire world. Yes. And that was not more than three, four years ago. Yes. So the economy is still reeling from what yes, happened from back where? then. Yeah. So really we can't have 
a, a, an economy we've given the particular government of the day that's tainted or it's broken somewhere and we expect him to magically fix it. Do Should you believe be the patient? economy is broken? How is it broken? I would not really say broken. It's just that it's we, 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 we took a couple of steps back. Have we recovered? I don't really think we recovered yet. Why do you think we've not recovered? I, because, but who's the interviewer here? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, who's supposed to be doing the asking of questions? But mm. I'm, I'm glad you're challenging me because mm -hmm. I, I, when COVID-19 hit, it, it both it was it was a hard hit yes but there were a lot of pros that's when the, the innovators came out and that the digital space became even bigger where now we can not only have to work on location it can be hybrid or you can be working from home so things happened we, we kind of made moves but industry like tourism industry you see they, yeah, they we're still picking up yeah we, it, we took a really hard really really hard hit very hard hit. People mm -hmm. were not traveling anywhere. Even domestic tourism in itself, or China, or in Guinea, Kukuja, it was just really bad. And tourism is one of our greatest attributes as a country. Mm -hmm. So we've not really, we're not really back to where we were. But aside from that, aside from COVID-19 coming and doing what it did, huh? even where we are right now as a nation, because president says, we're not debt collectors, you know, a country cannot thrive on, on gaining, keeping on borrowing. accumulating yeah. debt, yeah, borrowing and, and keeping on accumulating debt. We need to tax, and that's how the, the nation will nourish itself. Yes, but at what cost? So it's, it's a double-edged sword. Like, yes, we do need to tax, but at what cost? Okay, yeah. Okay, what I want to comment is that even if the president needs the money to run the nation, mm -hmm. and that's why they made a finance bill, mm -hmm. which the Kenyans has become a contestious to the mm -hmm. life of Kenyans mm -hmm. because of, of a taxation. Mm -hmm. And that's why the people are complaining because of where we have come from. Mm -hmm. Now, we have con they would have considered mm -hmm. to give Kenyans more time mm -hmm in order to recover from where we have come from. So in order to move forward. One but, okay. but now uh -huh. they are pushing Kenyans to, to impose the uh -huh. Kenyans who are suffering, uh -huh. who are already affected uh -huh. in the past, uh -huh. and now to pay uh -huh. more taxes uh -huh. by force, forcing the parliament uh -huh. uh, and the, uh, imposing to the people uh -huh. Uh, of which is not good. Mm -hmm. They have, they would have uh, engaged the Kenyans. Mm -hmm. They would have listened to the Kenyans, their views. Like the like previous mm -hmm. government, the, the way they have been running the government mm -hmm. through the taxes, they would have done the same mm -hmm. by giving the Kenyans a chance mm -hmm. to build the economy, mm -hmm. to recover. Then they they continue with that uh, plan. Mm -hmm for finance bills, tax okay. them, the country. I'll, I'll just so take it from, sorry, let me, sorry.